And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are trying to catch a bunch of cats. Have you heard of the phrase, it's like herding cats? Yeah, it's tough, I know. So we're going to be getting cats, we're going to be trying to get a bunch of the cats in the sack. We're looking at a little game here called Felix the Cat in the Sack from Rio Grande Games. This game is out of print right now, uh, but it's uh, pretty interesting. It plays three to five players. It's sort of an auction game. Think of it as a gamer version of For Sale. Let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets to pick a color of their cat in the sack cards, and they get 15 mice. Each of them get 15 mice. This is the currency in the game that you'll be bidding with. You get a five and 10 ones, and then everybody will take their cards and the game will start. And we also set it up so we have the cat in the sack. This is a, a five player game here. We have two, three, four, and six set up for the bidding and the auction. Let's tell you how this works. So each player has the same 10 cards in their hand. We have yellow cards that are positive values. We have a positive five. And I love the artwork on these cards. 11, 15, eight, and three. So everyone has those positive cards in their hand. They also have two negative cards in their hand, minus five and minus eight. They all have a zero bunny, and they all have a big dog and a little dog. We'll talk about what these do. At the beginning of the game, everybody shuffles these cards up, and their neighbor takes one of these and randomly removes one card. So everyone's gonna have nine cards, and nobody knows which card is removed from each person. Now randomly, somebody's gonna be the start player and have this cool little sack, and they are going to place one of their cards under the cat in the sack there. Everybody else in clockwise order is going to place their cards one at a time in the spots. So first player and clockwise all around so everybody has that there. Now, when the game starts, what's gonna happen is this card, the first player's card is going to get flipped over and they will bid. They can bid as many as they want. Let's just say they bid one mouse. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to bid for this entire row of cats in the sack. Think of this as one big sack. There's a bunch of cats in there. You're bidding for all of them. And the key here is that depending on where you placed, black, uh, basically, he, black and red are in a strong position because they know which cards are back here because as the game goes on, we'll get more and more information. So the next player will uh, either bid more or pass. Now, if they, let's just assume that people are bidding more and more and more. When somebody passes, they do two things. One, they take back everything that they have bid already that round. Then they take the first available uh, money off the next card. So they actually made. Now, these are points at the end of the game as well. So you're bidding with points. So essentially, they passed. They got all their bid back. And essentially, they just made two points this game or two mice. And then after that, they flipped this over. Ooh, 15. So now the next people kind of know, wow, this is looking like look, look a good round. There's already 20 here. Then it's bidding, bidding, bidding. Someone's going to pass. They would take these three plus everything they bid back. And they would flip this over. Ooh, a minus five. Ooh, okay, so now it's basically at a positive 15. It's still pretty good, and these two people know what, one of each of them know what they put down. They bid, bid, bid up and up and down, and this person finally passes, and he takes all their money back, plus these four. And then it gets down to this, and essentially he will end up taking this. Ooh, and he'll take all of it. So essentially we have, this sort of cancels this out. We have uh, 18. So now you're bidding. So if they bid with... 18 chips or 18 mice to get this, it's a wash. They didn't really win any money. So just because you got 18 points doesn't mean it was a good deal unless maybe you only bid 10 or eight. Uh, if you bid too much, you could still come out negative. So all these would go in that person's uh, pile uh, face down and uh, that would be one round. That player that won would take the start player around for the next time. We would then refill these up. If at any point in time you cannot fill these up, there's only a certain amount of money in the bank depending on the amount of players. If you can't fill up all the cards with the seed cash, then you don't fill it up at all and all of them are empty, which means you get nothing extra for passing the next round. And on that fifth, last person that passed would have taken the six here as well, because the first person would have taken this, second, third, fourth, and the last person there who couldn't pass would have had to have paid his bid and taken that there. Now, I showed you earlier there's some dogs here. There's a big dog and a little dog. If there is ever just one dog in the whole cat, uh, the whole sack, and it's a little dog, the little dog will scare away the lowest value, essentially either the highest negative, or if there's no negative ones, the lowest value. It will basically take this and they will cancel each other out. Now, if there's more than one dog, the, all the dogs scurry away, they fight each other, and they don't remove anything. 
If there is a big dog out there alone, the big dog will scare off the highest pointed cat. So let's say eight was it, it would take it. But again, if there was more than one dog, these dogs would fight each other off and this would stay. That's the dogs can kind of, that's how the dogs work. They kind of get rid of the other cards. This will continue for nine rounds because everyone starts at nine cards. As soon as the ninth round's over, you count up all the points that you have that you've won, plus any of the mice that you have left over. Each of these is one point each, and whoever has the most at the end is the winner. Also to note here, there's a few different variants on the amount of players that are played. For example, with four players, you have just the two, four, and the six. And with three players, you have just the three and the six, and this one plays a little bit differently. Whereas when the game is set up, there's one player that is not being used. These are shuffled randomly, and every time their card's always gonna be here. And then we go with the next start, the real start player here, and then there's one out here. So what happens with this is always at the beginning, this will get flipped over before this person bids the start player. And it goes on like normal. So after this player passes, and let's say, we have obviously our money on here, our mice. So this is how it would be set up. And when this player passes, he will pass here. He'll take these three and his bids like normal. And then these two players see two face up and there's two face down. And that's how the three player variant plays. I first heard this game uh, from Z Garcia, who's on, on one of his top lists and looked it up and it was out of print. It's still out of print. It's really hard to find copies these days. Only a few coming around, but I bought it. I way overpaid for it, but I'm glad I did because I really like this game. Now I like for sale. It's a quick game. It's an auction game. I could bring non-gamers into it. This game, you can still bring non-gamers into it, but there's a lot, there's, there's more interesting decisions I think here. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I love the fact that you have more or less information from other people on the t at the table at the time, depending on what order you're in. And as cards are getting flipped and people are passing, you're learning more information. And depending on that, you gotta decide, okay, do I take my bid back and the mice on the cards, or do I stay in for longer? Um, it's a great game that has, I love that hidden information. I love that pressing your luck of, mm, okay, I'll go around one more time and then everybody else passes and they knew that you were gonna get stuck with a bunch of negatives or you know, uh, the big dog that scares off the big cards. Uh, so I really like it. It's quick, it's like 20 minutes. Um, we're even thinking about making this, finding some little mice to use instead of the little the little chips for, for the money. Uh, but I love it. It's quick. It plays good with three, four, and five. Uh, it, it's just a really good two, uh, 20 minute auction game that has a more, to, more to it than it seems. That hidden element really is cool. And also the way that you throw out one random card makes things interesting because if you are a card counter, you'll never know exactly which cards are there. Uh, and I just, it's just a really awesome auction game. So if you like for sale, this is going to be one that you're going to want to check out. And if you can find it, possibly buy it because it's a highly recommend for me. Uh, I made my top 100 list before I played this game, but this one would probably definitely be on it if I were to do it now. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.